Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome I'm Nicole with the Bushel and Impact Designs. Today we are working on this 20 ounce straight tumbler from AB Designs Co. It has this fun silver lid that I'll be honest I started it and then I forgot to finish the lid but anyways I am working with this print another print from my collab collection with 311 Co. I wanted to originally do something a little different, so I taped off the bottom, but then I was going to just have the vinyl go to the bottom, but then I decided in the end, it ended up getting covered up anyway, so it didn't really matter, but I wanted some of the blue to show, but I also wanted some of the red and white stripes to show, so I'm actually going to turn it sideways and put it on the tumbler so that the stripes are going up and down. So I held my vinyl to the tumbler and just made a little mark about how tall I wanted it and then I just trimmed that off with my paper trimmer. And then I'm going to apply it using my favorite traditional vinyl hinge method. And I'm going to just line it up. Um, originally I was going to line it up at the top but then I decided I wanted to not cut so much of the blue off the bottom. And here I am deciding that I have a different idea. So I'm going to just remove that painter's tape. And then I'm going to apply the vinyl using that hinge method and letting both directions, both ends have some hangover of the vinyl. And then when I get to the overlap, once it is laid down then I'm just going to trim it in the middle of a line so it doesn't look so much like we just chopped it off. It kind of blends with those red and white stripes. For the hinge method I just tape it down with a little bit of painter's tape and then cut off a little of the backing and then just push down on the vinyl and the backing pretty much comes off by itself and then I just wrap it around. I changed my X-Acto knife blade so that it was very sharp and new because it makes cutting this top rim so much easier. It just glides through it like butter. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm just going to trim it off so that it's not overhanging. And then I'm going to take my edge trimmer from Cami Page Boutique and I'm going to set it on the middle setting and just trim off both the top and the bottom rim. Here's where I cut a circle out of that same vinyl for the little indent in the top of that rim. I push down, as you can see, the little indent for the straw hole, and I just trimmed that off with my sharp X-Acto knife. And I really wasn't gonna do anything fancy on the lid. I was just going to add some UV resin in that little indent, so I didn't finish it because I completely forgot that this had a lid like this, so I'll just go back and do it later, but that's all the extent I was gonna do for the lid anyways. So I got that all trimmed off, and then I just put it aside 
and I think that's what made me forget to go back and work on this lid. But after that, I gave the tumbler a coat of epoxy. I really wasn't sure exactly where this was going yet. I was not finalized or set in my design idea, so sometimes I just have to go with it and then see what comes to me at the moment. So what I did was I took it outside and I sprayed the top and the bottom rim only. You can see here it got a lot of overspray, but I sprayed it with white and then I let that dry and then I gave it a coat of black on top of that. And I don't know what was going on. It was really, really hot here that day. So my paint kind of, the white paint kind of separated when I sprayed the black on top. I don't know, it was really weird. I've never really seen that happen except for when I spray painted in the cold, it cracked. So anyways, I was, I just did it so it gave a little bit of a border. You can see there on the top, there's like a white border when you wipe away the black, but in the end, you really can't see that anyway. So I could have skipped the whole white process or the white spray paint step in the process and it would have been fine. But after those spray paints were dry, I just took my paper towel with some acetone and wiped it all the way to just give it like a distressed grungy edge. And then here you can see where it was, had separated as I started to wipe it away. And I really didn't like that look. So there was a little bit of cracking in there too, but I decided I was just going to fix that with my Posca paint marker. I just have a thick black one. So I just kind of touched it up and it was good. And then I am taking this God Bless America UV DTF decal. It came in the collection pack and it, I designed it to match this vinyl. So I had to add it on there. And I love that the stripes go up and down, but then they go vertical or they go horizontal on the decal, so it just gives it that contrast. And then here on the bottom, I really didn't like all that cracking, so I'm just going to touch up around the rim and the outer part of the bottom. I put a logo sticker on the bottom so you can't really see it once it's covered up, but the areas you would see, I just covered that up with that Posca marker. And then I'm gonna go straight in with a little bit of foil glue from Artistic Painting Studio. And as usual, I'm using my favorite medium to apply foil glue with, and that is a gloved finger. And then I just did some random spots and then I am drying that with my heat gun. And then I wanted to add just something that was contrasting, but also really complemented this design. So I had this really pretty light blue foil. I almost said vinyl, this light blue foil. And I'm just going to add that to all of the adhesive spots. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but the light blue foil is also from Artistic Painting Studio. That is my favorite and only place that I ever buy foil from, so that is where that's from. And then I'm just going to go around and add it to all of those little distressy spots. I just wanted it to kind of blend in with the grungy textured look of this vinyl, but kind of just give it a little bit of a contrast as well with the light blue. And then after that, I gave it two final coats of epoxy. I do not seal usually when I apply the foil glue. Sometimes I do, but it's not very often. I've just had issues with it before, so I usually just don't, and I don't usually seem to have a problem. So I gave it two final coats of epoxy after that, and this beauty was all done. Y'all know how much I love the distressed and grungy look, and I love the way this vinyl turned out. I loved every single print that I just don't know if I could pick a favorite. But as usual, I hope that I have inspired you in one way or another. And as usual, I will also leave all of the information where to find me and all the products that I used down in the description box. I will be back tomorrow with the last installment of our 4th of July collab mini series. Bye y'all.